this is my new MacBook Air and it seems to only like to make it about 26 minutes before there's an error. So I'll have to start using my old MacBook just to get through Photo Booth. So I apologize. Um, for, yes, you saw me write that. So we predict Y based on X and we're gonna use it for prediction purposes for the data that you know we hadn't already studied, but with a little bit of a restriction, you cannot predict outside the original X data range. You don't have to draw this, but let's say you had study data in here, right? Between these two X's, you're not allowed to predict for a data point way out here because you don't know that that trend's gonna continue. It's called extrapolation. And I don't feel comfortable with that. Most of these word problems, I'm not an expert on. I don't know if the linear trend is gonna continue. If you're working, let's say with Target, you know, for their inventory and you've been there five years, you're probably gonna know if some trend is gonna continue because you're gonna be an expert. That's what you do every single day. But we're just reading some word problems, right? So we're not experts on anything. So we're only gonna be allowed to predict inside of where I originally studied some data. Um, now, if you haven't gotten your handout out, pause me, go get your handout out. It's the quitting rate wage problem. Again, if you're Math 220, it's handout five. If you're Math 307, it's handout 14. So read through the problem. And it's talking about basically how much I pay you and how likely you are to quit. And that probably hopefully makes sense to you that there's probably a relationship between the two, right? And if you think about it, hopefully you can tell that the relationship is probably going to be negative. The more I pay you, the less likely you are to quit. The less I pay you, the more likely you are to quit. So we kind of already know that we should uh, have a negative relationship. Um, before we start doing some of the parts of the problem, you have some busy work. You've got to put the data into your calculator. So cut your calculator on, go to stat edit. If you have any data, make sure you clear out L1 and clear out L2. You need them both clear. Then this problem was actually made easier. It actually said X is the quit rate and Y I'm sorry, I said that backwards, that X is the wage and Y is the quit rate. That is not, that's a little too easy. This is what I would have said. I would have said predict quit rate based on wage. From there, you would have known predict Y based on X and that's how you would have known that X was the wage and Y was the quit rate, okay? So that's how I would have worded it. But pause me, put your data into the calculator, then come back. All right, so you should have put the wages into L1 and the quit rates into L2, just so we don't forget where we put the stuff, right? So now you're gonna go to stat, calc, choice four. It says Linreg, okay? Stat, calc, choice four. It says Linreg AX plus B, don't worry about that part. I want you to hit enter exactly one time because most of you guys have a very bad habit from high school. Your teacher taught you to hit enter twice because they knew that the default would be okay. That's not gonna be okay in my class. So I want you to hit enter one time. Now, unfortunately, some of you have old calculators like me, and then some of you have the newer calculators. The newer calculators are much more intuitive. Let me talk to them first. It says X list. Where did you put your X's? Make sure it says L1. Then it says Y list make sure it says L2. And how do you make the L1 and L2 come up? The second function of one makes an L1 come up. The second function of two makes an L2 come up, OK? 
okay? Then you can hit calculate. The old calculator people, I'm never gonna be able to, hold on. We're gonna, we're gonna get real fancy here using the flashlight, right? So, you know what, I don't, hold on. Let me get that up again so you can see exactly. Okay, old calculator people, all you have, this is terrible, I'm really failing right now, aren't I? Y'all are lucky I can hold two things in my hand. Okay, old calculator people, see how it's just blinking at you when you chose that number four and you hit enter one time? Your calculator wants to know where did you put your X's comma, where did you put your Y's? Right now, you're going to type second of one, comma. The comma is critical for the old calculator people. And then second function of two will make an L2 come up. So remember how it said Lin Reg, and then it was blinking at us? You have to go second of one, comma, second of two, make that come up, then hit enter. Okay. Now at this point... Let me hit enter. You all should have A, B, R squared and R. And at the top, it should say this. Some of you might be missing this part, okay? If you are missing your R and R squared, you have to do one thing right now, but you're only gonna have to do it once unless you change your batteries. Go to second of zero. It pulls up catalog. Scroll down to Diagnostic On. Diagnostic On, don't stop at Diagnostic Off. Diagnostic On, hit Enter a couple times, it'll say Done, Done. Rerun your linear regression, and when you do that, you're gonna have everything. And this is what you should have showing. Okay, everybody should have that. Now, this is what I mean. Your calculator tells you what it means by A and B. So you're gonna stick the A in there and you're gonna stick the B there. So part A on the handout, you should write Y hat equals negative 0.3466X plus 4.86. Usually I have a few students who have mistyped their data. So if you're just a little bit off, it's probably bad data entry. Go back and fix your numbers, okay? Part B asks you what is the correlation coefficient and to interpret that. Now the interpretation is super easy. I don't need a full sentence. I only need two things. I need you to tell me if it's positive or inverse. This one is inverse. And then I need you to tell me if it's weak, moderate, or strong based off of that number line that we put up earlier. This one is strong. Inverse and strong is all I need for that. We're going to skip part C until the next video because that's a little bit harder stuff. We'll come back to C on the next video. I think I need to erase some stuff up here. Okay. We're going to do D and E now. And if you look at D and E, they seem very similar. It's almost like, why would I ask you to do sort of the same thing twice, just with a different number? It asks you to predict at 15, and it asks you to predict at 8. So this is where, remember we said we could predict, but not outside of the original X data range. The data range, it's a small data set. If you look, it kind of runs something like between $6 and $13. So you cannot do the 15. All you're gonna say is can't do outside the original X data range. We don't know if that trend would continue. It probably doesn't because it probably means you have a, more of a career and not just like a job that you're gonna quit real easy. 
So that's what I meant by you can't do it if it's outside of the original X data range. $8, you can do it. So how do you do it? Well, that's the whole point of part A. This is our prediction equation. You put in the X and you'll get the Y out. And depending on, you know, how many decimal places you've kept, something like approximately 2.09. Part F, we're going to skip until the next video because, again, he's a little more involved. Part G, so it asks you for a residual. So when I ask you for a residual, I have to reference a particular data point. So let me say that a little bit differently. Like up here in Part E, I can ask you to predict for whatever I want as long as it's in between that 6 and 13, right? It doesn't have to be a data point. For a residual, because the definition of a residual is how far the data point is from the line, it has to be a data point. So this one, I asked you to find, hold on, let me write the formula to remind you what we're doing. I asked for the residual at 7.5. So that's going to be the X value. So remember, there's two parts to the residual. You have to get the prediction at that point. So this, when you're doing a residual, it's like you're doing prediction plus you're doing something extra. Oh, I'm about to run out of battery. Hold on. Okay, so let's get the prediction first. Y hat, so we're gonna plug in 7.5 this time, just like we did for part E. When you do that, you're going to get approximately 2.262. But a lot of times students forget to finish the problem. This is the Y hat. This. That goes in there. But residual is Y minus Y hat. A lot of students miss the easy part. Where do you get the Y from? Well, he's the partner of the X in the data set. Go back up to the top of the handout, find X in the data set, look right below it, and you should see 2.3 minus Y hat. So the residual is approximately 0.038. Again, your numbers might be slightly different depending on how you've rounded stuff. So if you were looking at a data set, I can tell you that point would be pretty close, right? Because that's a very small number. Um, yeah, I think this is a very good stopping point for this video. Um, the next video, we still have two major pieces to talk about with linear regression. They're going to be very specific interpretations. And then we'll come back and redo part C and F that we skipped here. And then we'll do another full problem from one of the handouts. So, but this is a good stopping point until then.